Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke and welcome to my channel. About a year ago, I made my first Warband Mods video. At the time, the mods I showed were just my personal favorites from back when I played the game casually over a decade ago. But since then, you guys have been suggesting more mods. And more mods. And when I tried to make a final video on the best Warband mods, you still gave me more. So I tried to make the most epic ranking ever, and still, you give me more. The Warband mods just never seem to stop. And I've been keeping a spreadsheet of all the mods, and look at this, we still have a whole bunch. Normally, I'd probably name this video my favorite mods from Warband Part 5, but screw it. This is just more mods you guys keep recommending to me. It's been a damn long journey so far, so here's an attempt at reviewing all the mods that never made it in my previous videos into a single video. Will this be the final mod video? Doubt it, but who knows. As always, if you enjoyed the content, feel free to support the channel with a like and subscribe. So, more Warband mods that you recommended. Let's do this. Before we do start, I should clarify something. While all of these mods are pretty solid, when you've played as many mods as I have, some become very redundant, and this will show. So here's how I ranked the mods. The first four I consider redundant. Number 8 to 4 are pretty solid mods for people who like those types of mods specifically. And the last 3 are my top 3, the mods I really enjoyed and definitely recommend. As always, I put timestamps, so feel free to skip ahead. Starting with something very simple, a new dawn. A new dawn is a mod that takes place in Calradia, but adds a lot of new items, lots of new troops, and a bunch of some mods such as diplomacy. If this sounds familiar, it's because there's already a whole bunch of other mods like that, such as Banner Page, Native New Design, Floris, and Diplomacy for Letdom. The idea of improving Native Warband is a good idea, but why do so many people gotta do the same thing? These mods are so similar from one another, at this point they just blend together for me. So when it comes to New Dawn, does it at least bring something unique? Well, I did notice a few interesting things about this particular mod. Turns out there's a chance of winning random, high-quality loot during battles. For example, I literally got a high-end helmet after my very first fight. So that's cool, I guess, random surprises like that. But the most pleasant change, seriously, is just how devastating cavalry charges have been made. A lot of enemies, you don't even have to hit them with your sword. You can simply run them down with an average horse, which is pretty awesome. In fact, why aren't there more mods like this? Even mods like Suva Nobumi only allows for this to happen with war elephants. But in real life, horses would definitely knock the wind out of people, so that should definitely be more recurrent. So take notes, modders. A new Dawn got this part right, and it is awesome. But besides that, like I said, there's not much to it. It's another native revamped mod. It does the trick, but I really have my fill of Calradia, I'm not gonna lie. But speaking of having my fill with Calradia, here's Calradia Borderlands. I can't stay on this one for too long either, to be honest. Imagine Calradia, but much bigger. That's Calradia Borderlands. This map is ridiculously huge, and also brings many more factors and cultures. Notably, there's some samurai factions, and the scenery is borrowed directly from Gekokujo. But again, this mod is basically like, hey, if you didn't think Calradia could be any more grindy, here's twice the size. Have fun! In all seriousness, there's definitely a lot of work that went into it, but I'm too worn out to fully appreciate it. That said, there's few extra features, mainly this mod has a lot of bandits, even very large groups, which is fun and challenging. However, these large groups don't offer any rewards to my knowledge, which is disappointing. There is also a feature for the Dark Knight invasion, a huge army that invades Calradia, which I've seen in other mods. And while it is impressive, it's no Zen invasion from Paris now. And again, that's pretty much it. It might be a good mod for you if you don't like to go too far away from native, but me, I gotta get out of here. Next up, Sands of Faith, another Crusade mod. There must be dozens of them. But first off, this is the first one I see with an animated menu. How did no one else do that? But anyway, it's a Crusade mod with everything you would expect from it. Battles are immersive, so is the music, so is the scenery, the armors are gorgeous, it's got it all. However, this mod also lets you start as an historical ruler. I was leaning towards Salah ad -Din, but I always play the Muslims. Time to go Crusader with the Leper King. And they really did the mask pretty good. Also, props for the extra layer of dust from the horses in battle. Nice touch. 
But overall, there's just not much else that sets this mod apart from In the Name of Jerusalem or Crusades and Jihads. It's a Crusade mod, another Crusade mod. Well done, but much like improved native mods, picking Sands of Faith over any other will depend on the slightest change you prefer the most. And oh my god, we're back in Calradi already. This is... I don't even know how to say that. Iskl mod? Whatever. This one puts a stronger emphasis on kingdom management. Namely, if you start as a ruler, you get to create your own troop trees from scratch. And I gotta say, it's both intuitive and fun to do. I must have spent at least half an hour exploring the options. Each troop tier is given a budget and skill points to focus on whatever build you want, and it's up to you to make the most out of them. The mod even lets you choose the gender of your troops, which is awesome, until you realize woman voices in Warband are very limited. <laughs> Then said, like any good mod that lets you start as a ruler should do, the mod instantly gives you a party size of over 600. Now that's what I'm talking about. The factions in this mod have also been split into several smaller ones, so going to war is somewhat easier because it's on a smaller scale. Couple of glitches though, the option to declare war does not appear in the diplomacy options, so the only way to attack a kingdom is to attack a lord without warning, which I'm not fond of. Also, all of the men have squished faces. All of them. It's distracting to say the least. But this is all far from being what all the mod can do. According to ModDB, you can marry rulers, there's tons of unique quests, rebellions, the ability to kill lords, and plenty of other features, which I can't cover now because we gotta move on. However, of all native revamped mods out there, this one is actually kind of refreshing. But standing at number 8, let's go into historical mods with Renaissance. This mod was made by Zed Paolo, the same modder behind Sparta, for which I made a review a few months ago. And much like Sparta, the immersion here is real. Come to think of it, it's actually funny that so many mods have a renaissance aesthetic, but this is the first mod I ever played that actually takes place solely in Italy. This mod also gives you the choice to start as a historical ruler, so of course I went with Cesare Borgia, because it's the only name I remember from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Overall, I don't really have anything bad to say about the mod, the armors are simply stunning, the music is captivating, and the fights are just brutal. <laughs> Only issue, it's a little buggy. I had a crash during a siege. But I could probably have made a dedicated video for this mod as there's a lot to it. But anyway, if you're looking for the definitive Italian Renaissance mod, this should be an instant favorite for you. However, here's a different time period that captivates me just a tiny more. At number 7, this is 1429, the Hundred Years War. This mod takes us to the late medieval period in France, as the French struggled to kick the English out of the country for good, and that's about all there is to it. Like any good total conversion out there, we got new armors, scenery, music and sound effects. It's also got the fighting animation I like. The mod also boasts many unique quests, one including Joan of Arc. Problem is, I can't even complete it. The first quest is giving some food, including ham, to a group of rebels but I spent a whole hour going into villages, markets and taverns looking for the damn ham, and I could not find it, so I can't progress. But still, the mod is pretty intense and is gorgeous. Anyone fascinated with the Hundred Years' War will have a blast. I should also point out that this mod was made in French, and it is refreshing to see a mod in French. But don't worry, as there's also an English version. And oh my god, back to Calradia. Though this time it's more positive. This one is called Calradger? I think that's how you say it? This mod was made by the same person behind the Evlat mod. I suggest you watch my video on it for more context. Calred Gur takes place in Calradia, but with a central quest. Essentially, the Calred Gur is the emperor of Calradia. The emperor is whoever wears the crown, which has seven gemstones. So in this mod, the goal is to find all gemstones to make yourself the Calred Gur. But once you do crown yourself, all kingdoms will declare war on you, while you will get the support of villages for plenty of recruits. So that's actually a very interesting concept. And if you've played Evelat, this very much feels like a prequel. Once again, companions are essential for completing new quests. In fact, the inn from which you start in Evelat can be restored in Calradgur. But overall, this mod is pretty solid, if not a bit grindy. To get the gems, you must first beat four groups of each bandit type. Each yield a map to a bandit army which yields a gem, so it takes many fights and the bandit armies are ridiculously huge. That said, 
Story-based mods are definitely refreshing, and I consider this one a new personal favorite for its originality. <laughs> so far, we've mostly had historical mods or native revamped. Time for some fantasy with Legacy of the Dragon. This mod has a high fantasy setting with the elements you would expect from it. Different species, such as elves, orcs, and the undead. And magic, like spellcasting or summoning troops. But the mod lets you pick a race, then you set off. I went with an elf with the idea of exploring magic, and the mechanics are pretty similar to Fantasy Calradia. All over the world, there are key places where you can buy different types of magic from smaller factions, such as necromancers and wizards. From all of them, you can learn a bit about the lore, hire spellcasters, and buy gear. Once you have a spellbook, you can access your spells in the camp menu, and some of them are pretty cool. For example, you can summon the dead. They have a bit of a great potential, but the main caveat is that they can't get wounded, they can only die. Though what's really cool about them is that you can basically summon them indefinitely for free. The spell costs health, but you can just wait and heal, then do it again, essentially giving you an endless supply of soldiers for free. Other spells include summoning golems, which are pretty strong. So overall this mod is pretty cool. My only criticism is that everything is expensive as hell. Not an issue if you cheat like me, but for anyone else, fully experiencing this mod will take some grind. Each spellcaster is like a thousand dinars. Faction gear can go up to 20,000 dinars. And the funniest part is that there is a warlock hideout at the south of the mat. After defeating a few demons, you can talk to a warlock and get really high-end gear from him. However, like I said, it's crazy expensive. And at the same time, some of those items need a lot of skill. This 100,000 dinar sword requires 30 strength to wield. What's the point of getting it? You can also buy a giant spider, which I've seen in other mods, but the writing skill needs to be 5 which takes some time to level up to, and other than the looks of it, it's nothing special. These items can be expensive, sure, but you should be able to use these items without the grind of leveling up, is all I'm saying. Also, dragons. As in the name of the mod, they do have dragons in this mod, but, well, at some point you reach the limitations of the game. They do make me want to run away, though. They are intimidating, just not in a full dragon sort of way. Overall, if you enjoy high fantasy mods, this is pretty good but I do recommend cheating to get to the good stuff right away. Back to historical mods, here's a surprisingly good one. The American Civil War Revived. Another solid mod on this list. This one takes you to the, well, American Civil War. You can choose between the Union or the Confederacy, with the goal being of destroying the other. Like previous mods, you can start as a ruler, or more specifically in this mod, as a general. So of course I chose Grant, and the outfit looks pretty good. And with a large starting party size, the game sets you off on a quest to take a confederate fort. In terms of battle, this mod centers on the firing line and does it really well. It's similar to Leg, except the AI in Civil War doesn't just charge like an idiot. The battles are actually very immersive, with artillery, and the new death screams really bring out the horrors of war. And the increased battle size also makes for amazing battles and sieges. As said on the ModDB page, however, this is a mod meant to be played as a commander. As a soldier, all it takes is one bullet. So your power as a soldier is pretty much meaningless. To win the battle, you need to line up your troops just right and pour fire into enemy ranks. Only issue I have is that while you can hire artillery, for some reason I can't buy any, I'm probably just missing something. The only other mod I had played in this time period was 1860s America, which put more emphasis on the adventurer part and less so on battles. But American Civil War blows it out of the water to be honest. And it just got an update like two weeks ago, so make sure to try it out. At this point, we're getting into my top three. So here we go. At number three, Revenge of the Berserk. This mod is based on a manga called Berserk, about a mercenary called Guts, who wields a massive sword. I don't know the manga, sadly, so this connection is lost on me, but essentially Revenge of the Berserk takes you to another low fantasy world, and puts you in the role of Guts. This is a story-driven mod, with an ever-updating quest telling you what to do next. And comparing the quest in the game to the manga summary on Wikipedia, this mod seems like a clear adaptation. So far into the mod, this is word for word the story. But okay, so this is a story-driven mod. What else? 
Well, the character of Guts is made fairly well, and as a Berserker, you're given a massive sword. Your fighting skills are practically maxed out, and you can wreak havoc on enemy troops. Like, seriously, there's a mission where you have to kill 100 troops by yourself, and it's brutal. In fact, the giant sword can swing at many enemies by charging, which means holding the sword for an extra second until you hear a sound effect. It's awesome, as each swing can take out like three enemies at a time. It kind of reminds me of Nightmare and Soul Calibur 3, actually. If only it was that epic. Well, maybe we're gonna have that in Bannerlord. But that's basically it. In terms of the world itself, it feels similar to Calradia. The kingdoms have changed, but there's few different units with different sizes. And overall, it's pretty similar to Native. The main appeal is combat and the story. And I actually like that it always tells us what to do next and what to expect. Lots of story-based mods sometimes don't do anything and you're just wondering what to do next. Not with this one. All in all, Revenge of the Berserk is pretty good, especially if you love slashing enemies around. Number 2. Rising Sun You cannot talk about Rising Sun without talking about the mod it's based on, Gekokujo. Gekokujo is one of my classics. If you love Samurai and Feudal Japan, Gekokujo is the mod to play and I've often ranked it high in my videos. So Rising Sun is based on Gekokujo. You can pretty much find the same map, scenery and items. The main difference is that Rising Sun is over 200 years later, during the fall of the Samurai. The emphasis is much more placed on guns, although there's a clash of technologies if you will. Guns will be devastating at range, but if a fully armored Samurai makes it to your line, it gets messy quickly. But in a sense, I would say Rising Sun is like the fall of the Samurai DLC to Shogun 2. If you love the Samurai, but also love the Gunpowder era, this mod does a fantastic job of combining both worlds, and it nails the time period. It absolutely is a worthy companion to Goku Ujo, and you should definitely get it. And finally, the best mod I've discovered for this video took me to a galaxy far, far away. You guessed it, at number 1, Star Wars Conquest. This is by far the biggest surprise today. Originally, the mod was meant for the original Mountain Blade, but a few years ago it was added to Warband via the Steam Workshop. And I mean, you can only expect so much here, right? Star Wars and Warband? This would take too much work. But look at this! This has to be the most gorgeous world map I've ever seen. And it honestly works great! So in Star Wars Conquest, you get to choose one of three starting factions. The Empire, the Rebels, or the Hut Cartel. I initially started as a Wookiee for the Cartel, but as with many fantasy mods, non-human species have very limited compatibility. So I started again with the Empire, but not before meeting Jabba the Hut, and well, he looks creepy in that chair. But anyway, regardless of which faction you choose, you immediately get to become a lord of that faction by just speaking to the ruler. So I swore homage to Palpatine. And after that, it was a big free-for-all as I went from planet to planet to get recruits. But right off the bat, the scenery is drop-dead gorgeous. Whether you're on Endor or Coruscant or the Death Star or Tatooine, it's everything you would expect. Items-wise, we of course get the classic armors found in Star Wars, but also a wide variety of lightsabers. The lightsabers are quick and absolutely deadly, with the sounds to boot, so it's all good and fun. There are force powers too, of course, though it's mainly throwable items, similar to magic spells in other mods. And while you can't block with a lightsaber, there is a shield in the form of a force shield, which works pretty well. But because of the clear addition of blasters, this is by and large a gun mod. Horses have been replaced with speed bikes, but they're largely inefficient, and most armor will only protect you from a laser shot or two. This means battle in Star Wars Conquest tend to switch from brutal close quarters or distant firing lines that last for a while. But between all of that and the music, Star Wars Conquest is everything I could ask for in a Warband mod. If you're looking for a serious mod with lots of options, in one of the most beloved universes, then Star Wars Conquest is definitely for you. Props to the modders for rising up to the challenge. And that's about it for today. Thanks for watching everyone! This video was basically about reviewing all of the remaining mods I had yet to play in one single video, so I hope you enjoyed it. What's in the future? 
Well, I'm sure there will be more recommendations, but future mods would really have to stand out for me to consider reviewing them. And I've already tried ranking all the mods I've played before. If I did it again, I'd go from ranking 42 mods to 64. And sure, some of those new 24 mods have surprised me and would change the ranking, but screw that. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, links to all mods can be found in the video description, as well as all of my social links, including my Discord server, which contains a database for all the mods I've played. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.